Good morning. On behalf of the keepers of the Great Grove, I want to welcome you all to worship today with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. Today, we are celebrating Litha, a name which is given by many Earth-based traditions to the time of the summer solstice, which officially occurred last Thursday. At Litha, we mark the longest day of the year and we celebrate the power and energy of the sun, which is the source of warmth and light around the world. I am Jessica Laughlin, and it's my privilege to serve this congregation as the Director of Lifespan Religious Education. As we strive to live our mission to embrace freedom, to love inclusively, to grow in mind, body, and spirit, and help add to the healing of our world. Let us pause as we begin and respect the peoples of the Peoria Nation, whose ancestors welcomed and assisted the first Europeans to visit this place, the Peoria's traditional homeland, and the ground that we're on this morning. Let us also acknowledge and welcome in spirit the Peoria people as they live far away from us now. Thank you for joining us in the sanctuary or online. It's an act of courage to seek connection and larger purpose in this age, and we welcome you. If you're new, help us get to know you by staying and visiting in coffee hour or the Zoom Room version of Coffee Hour after service. You can wear a name tag. I'll get mine, I promise. And, uh, or get one from the welcome desk. Today's worship is for all ages. All of us are welcome here in whatever way that we arrive. If your littles need a little more space, we have a rug to crawl on in the back, and childcare is always available in the nursery as well. If you'd like a large print version of anything or hearing assist devices, our ushers will be happy to help you. Now, just a few announcements of busy things happening at our busy church. Today, after worship, you're invited to join me in the conference room for a viewing of the General Assembly's closing worship. We're in the time of the year where the Unitarian Universalist Association gathers for its annual General Assembly. This year, all of General Assembly is online, and the Sunday worship will be live streaming. So if anybody wants to join me for a watch party for a little more church, we can do that. Or you can view from home or wherever you happen to be. Later this week, on Friday, um, I'll be hosting a craft night in the Fellowship Hall. So come on down. We'll make some chalice-themed crafts and see where that takes us. We'll have string art, tissue paper, painting, whatever you are moved to do. And keep in mind that coming up next month, we have a new kind of service that we're trying out called T-Shirt Theology. Jill Thomas is taking submissions for your favorite T-shirt that maybe tells us a little bit about you and what you, you believe. Um, submissions via email to Jill Thomas or the worship committee are being accepted right now, and we'd love to hear from you and your T-shirts. All right. I'd like to open with an opening chant. This 
Sean Thomas, Gunnell, Susan Smith, and Tasha Green will lead us. Thanks for getting us started there. Our opening words are brought to us, written and delivered by Dave Grebner. Emerald Willow. Some days I seek to be the Emerald Willow, rooted in mother, reaching up for father, becoming stronger with each bending in the breeze bowing to the wisdom of the movement, the joy of ruffling leaves, the moment of no separation, when me and not me become forever flow. I would like to invite the Smith family to come up and light the chalice. Midsummer by Allison Ehrman. Bring in the light, bring in the laughter, gather the love, gather the yearning, gather the games, gather the children, bring them all in, for they nourish our souls. Thank you for that. Let us take a moment now to acknowledge our gratitude for this church. One of the ways that we express that gratitude is through our offering. With our gifts freely given, we may say yes to the values of our faith. May our offering help us practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond our congregation as tools to empower our mission. It is our practice to give away some of our gifts that we collect to help others. This month, we are sharing our plate with Look, It's My Book. Established in 2008, Look, It's My Book provides new reading material that the children get to choose to Peoria, area school children. The books are provided free of charge, and Look, It's My Book receives no government funding. So please give generously. You may use the envelope to indicate if your gift is all for Look, It's My Book, for a pledge, or for the regular one-third split. The ushers will pass the plate during music for meditation. 
After the plates have gone by and I light the first candles, all are welcome to come and light candles of care as well. The candles of care symbolize our joys, our sorrows, our heartbreaks, and our celebrations. Will the ushers please come forward?
allow me to take a moment to speak some of the joys and concerns that are on the hearts and minds of our congregation. I'd like to start with the great joy that General Assembly is happening virtually right now and has been since midweek. As you use all over the continent have gathered in the mystery and in one another's presence in Zoom rooms across the internet. We have debated, discussed, and are right now in the process of deciding about what will happen with the proposed revision and amendment to the Article 2 of the bylaws, the section that we currently now think of as our seven principles, may evolve as our living faith teaches us that we all evolve. The bylaws might change, but our principles won't go anywhere. They're in our hearts and they have meaning for us. And so may these new values, if that's the direction that is taken. I'd like to share another joy at GA that we also passed the business resolution supporting all of our trans siblings. And it was a great joy to see our, congrega our congregations together pass that with a 91% vote. <laughs> Member Evan Stubbs shared with us that his hometown of Rudijo, New Mexico, is in the midst of a devastating forest fire. The entire population has been evacuated, about 10,000 people. So far, only two fatalities, which seems lucky given the scale. And damage is estimated at 1,400 structures lost, including 500 homes. Evan's immediate family are okay, but the town will be changed forever. Our condolences go out to Steve and Linda Fairbanks. Linda's father, Bruce A. Klingo, passed away on June 19th. He was in the loving embrace of his wife of 62 years, Janice Klingo. And we hold the Jones family in our love as they navigate supporting Alex through a mental health challenge. Katie is happy to share more information as requested and notes, cards, and letters of love and encouragement are welcome. You may send them care of UUCP and we'll forward them on. As I light these remaining candles for all of our unspoken joys and concerns, we'll listen to the music provided by Sherry. And now I hand things over to Tony Huerta. Well, good morning. I got the Brittany. In a moment, we'll begin our litha ceremony by declaring sacred space. For us, this involves what we call casting a circle. Did I lose it? A quick ceremonial blessing and cleansing of our immediate surroundings. But by virtue of being in fellowship with you in this sanctuary, we declare that that work is already accomplished. Next, members of our group will invite in the spiritual aspects of the four quarters to aid us in our celebration. This will be a short invocation spoken to the cardinal directions, east, south, west, and north. 
welcoming the qualities of the classical elements of air, fire, water, and earth. At the end of each will be a callback, an opportunity for everyone here to join in. As each direction is called, you will hear the words end with, we welcome you. If you so choose, please join us by repeating back, we welcome you. And then we ask for the spiritual presence of goddess and God, principles of divine feminine and divine masculine energy that work through us and to whom we credit and thank for all that we are given in life. We will also ask for the spiritual presence of the revealer, an expression of the divine that both encompasses and goes beyond the male-female binary. And we will also invite in the presence of our ancestors to share in this celebration with us. As we reach the conclusion of our ceremony, we will say a few words to the divine principles and release the energies of the four directions. Again, there will be a callback as we address north, west, south, and east, this time with the parting words, be with us always. Please feel free to join back, be with us always. And finally, with some finishing words, our presentation will be concluded. Will the quarter callers rise and take their places? Let us begin. Spirit of the East, spirit of air, of morning and springtime, be with us as the sun rises in the times of beginning, times of planting. Inspire us with the fresh breath of courage as we go forth into new adventures. We welcome you. We welcome you. Spirit of the South, spirit of fire, of noontime and summer, be with us through the heat of the day and help us to be ever growing. Warm us with strength and energy for the work that awaits us. We welcome you. We welcome you. Spirit of the West, spirit of water, of evening and autumn, be with us as the sun sets and help us to enjoy a rich harvest. Flow through us with cooling, healing quietness and bring us peace. We welcome you. Spirit of the North, Spirit of Earth, of nighttime and winter, be with us in the darkness, in the time of gestation. We welcome you. We welcome you. By the raising of one hand, I call upon the presence of Mother Goddess born only of herself. From her we proceed, and unto her in due time we will all return. Great Mother, be with us now. By the raising of my other hand, I call upon the presence of Father God. Lord of the dance of life, it is in following you we turn the wheel of the year. Divine Father, be with us now. I draw my hands together, and in doing so, these two forces become one, yet are greater than the sum of their parts. Bright revealer, great keeper of the mysteries that go beyond any name or form or gender construct, 
be with us now. I place my hands upon my heart, and I welcome the voices of the ancestors to this circle. Forebearers of our lineages, pioneers of our vocations and personal callings, walk with us, sing with us, share our circle once again. Beloved one, be here with us now. So mote it be. I invite Joe Lakota to share a story with us. Good morning. I have family up in Uyago, so real, that's real close to my heart. Um, I was a New Mexico girl for a long time. And while I lived there, uh, I had the privilege of being given a lot of stories by a lot of Kewa elders as I was working with the children, and they knew I would be able to tell the stories uh, at the schools and so forth. This story uh, was given to me at the, I was teaching how to put up a teepee at the uh, Indian Museum up on the Museum Hill in Santa Fe. And uh, uh, I can't remember his first name. I want to say Larry Bird, a Hopi man, got a group of us together and told us this story. And I haven't told it very many times. There were two young children who lived in the Kewa village. I'll call them Wilbert and Poviwa. Poviwa it means butterfly in Tewa. So Wilbert and Poviwa, as young children, would go outside of their village every day, and they would wander and wander around. And they lived in the high desert, but there was also the river and the lakes and the woods. And they would go about on many adventures. One of the things they liked to do to pass the time was to make arrows. So they would find young saplings, straight and tall, and they would cut them and peel the bark and dry them. And then they would hunt for goose feathers to cut, to help the feathers fly, to help the arrows fly. And they would look for uh, triangular stones, or they would chip uh, obsidian to make some little arrowheads, and they would strap them on to the arrows. And they loved doing this and painting the arrows. And they had a great pile of arrows, and they found a little cave where they could keep them dry. And sometimes they would shoot the arrows with their little bows and play. And they accumulated quite a few of these arrows. Well, one day they were out playing rather late. Usually they tried to be home before it got too dark. But it was summer, and they were out playing. And they started to walk home in the moonlight. It was a full, beautiful moon. And Wilbert looked up and he said, oh, Poviwa, look how beautiful the moon is. She's like a great pearl. And Poviwa looked up in the sky and she said, oh, look, it, that moon has a face. It has such a funny face. <laughs> it's so silly and goofy. And Wilbert said, oh, Poviwa, no. Don't ever make fun of them. But before he could say moon, poof, Poviwa was gone. He turned around and he looked everywhere, but no Poviwa. And there was a little hill, so he ran up that little hill where he could survey the whole area, and he looked about in desperation, but no Poviwa. Oh, and then Wilbur stood and he looked up into the sky at the full, beautiful moon. He thought for a minute, what should he do? So he ran to the cave and he gathered up these arrows. And he took some rope that he made from tree bark, and he started to tie the arrows into squares and tie the squares together until he had created a great ladder, a very, very long ladder. And he took his bow, and with all of his strength, he shot one arrow of that ladder up into the sky, and miraculously, it went on and on until he could no longer see the top of that ladder. And he gathered some berries in a little bag and tied it to his waist, and he started to climb that ladder, one foot above the other, holding on very tight. Now, this was a long journey, 
He hadn't thought about what a long journey it might be. He was just thinking about finding Povawa. So he proceeded up the ladder. His hands became raw and his feet became tired. And he would try to tie himself to the ladder to rest so that he wouldn't fall. Pretty soon he was up in the sky and he couldn't even see the earth anymore. But he kept climbing. And if you can imagine, it was four days and four nights of climbing. He became delirious, but his feet kept moving and his hands kept moving. And finally he came through a cloud and he reached up and it was firm. And he pulled himself up on that cloud and he lay down in exhaustion and went into a deep sleep. He woke to a funny little giggling sound. And when he opened his eyes, there was a little tiny tot of a person standing there above him, laughing at him and signaling him to follow. So Wilbur got up and he started to follow this funny little child. And she was taking him far to where there was a glowing light. And this was the house of Grandmother's son. Now, usually in stories, the sun and the moon are lovers, and the sun is the man and the woman the moon. But in this story, they are both grandmas, good and bad. So there before them was a golden, gleaming light. And as they got closer, Wilbur could see that it was a beautiful house. And there in the doorway waiting for him was a beautiful woman. Oh, Wilbert, she called. I've been waiting for you. I'm glad you made it. How do you know me? Oh, I'm Grandma's son, she said. You come on in here. Grandma will take care of you. And so Wilbert went inside, and Grandma fed him some, some squash and green chili stew and some bread. And she rubbed salve on his hands and feet. And she washed his hair and braided it. And he laid down on the bed and went into a deep sleep. When he awoke, he was first thing from his mouth was calling Poviwa's name. Oh, it's okay, Grandma said. I know where Poviwa is, and I will show you how to get there. Hey, but I have something to give you. And she had a little bag. And she said, there are four objects in this bag, Wilbur, that you're going to need in order to find Poviwa. You will know what to do with them when the time comes. So she took him outside and she pointed and she said, now over on the horizon there is a soft glow. That is the home of Grandmother Moon. So that is where you are to go. Be very careful. So Wilbert set out and he got closer and closer to this glowing house and he could hear a sound. What a weird sound, he thought. But as he got closer, he recognized the voice of Poviwa. And we could he see the house. He looked up at the chimney. And there stuck in that chimney was poor little Poviwa. And there must have been a fire in in the hearth because her feet were being singed and she was crying out. And when he got there, he called out her name, Poviwa. And she saw him, Wilbur, help me. And he climbed up and he popped her out of that chimney and helped her down, and she said, oh, no, she said, Grandmother Moon will hear that I am not calling, and she will know I've escaped. Ah, but Wilbert looked in that bag, and there he found a pine cone, and he grabbed it out, and it swelled up, and he stuck it in that chimney, and when the smoke come through that old pine cone, it went, ooh, ooh, and so they started off, and they ran, ran back to Grandmother's son's house, And pretty soon, Grandmother Moon came home, and she saw that she had been fooled. She saw that pine cone up in the chimney, and she was curious. And she started to roll, a huge moon rolling, because that was the way she moved. And she started to roll, and she knew where they were going. She knew how that grandmother's son was, and she rolled after them. They were running as fast as they could. But when Wilbert looked back, there she was, the great moon gaining on them. And he looked into his bag, and there was a rose. 
And he took out that rose and he threw it behind him. And where he threw it, a great bramble grew, thorny bramble. And the moon had no brakes and could not stop and rolled right into that bramble and was tangled up for quite some time. So they got a little bit ahead. And pretty soon, here she come, right on their heels. Oh, Wilbert looked in that bag again, and there was a shell. And he pulled out that shell, and he threw it behind him. And where he threw it, a great lake appeared, conveniently with a little canoe and paddle. So Wilbert and Poviwa got into the little canoe, and they paddled directly across the lake. Oh, but here come the moon with no brakes. And she rolled right into what turned out to be a rather deep lake. And she was stuck in the mud for quite a while. And of course, they got ahead of quite a bit. But pretty soon she got out of that lake and she started rolling, rolling, rolling. And Wilbert looked behind and there she was. One more object in that bag and he looked and it was a stone. And he took the stone and he threw it behind him. And where he threw it, a great mountain appeared, a great craggly steep mountain with a broad base. Oh, but that was on the other side, Kobe Wa and Wilbur. But here come the moon. And she rolled right up the side of the mountain and she got quite a ways up, but then all of a sudden uh, she started to roll down backwards. And she made many attempts. But she finally realized that she was going to have to go around this wide base if she was going to find these kids. So that's what she had to do. And in that interim of time, Obi Wan Wilbert made it to grandmother's son, Golden House. And there they were safe. And she took them in and she put some salve on little Povey Wa's feet. And she fed them both some green chili and squash stew and bread. And she had them rest. And while they were resting, she prepared their packages for their return journey. And when they woke, she said, oh, down in the village, there's much grieving. They think you are lost. They're precious children. So you must, you must return home. But they, she gave them containers of water and food, and they started back down. Now, it seemed to be that they could return to the earth much quicker than it had taken Wilbert to climb up. And they had a moonbeam to light their way. So eventually they got home and went back to their village. And Oh, the people were so joyous to see them, these children they thought they had lost. Children are sacred beings and they didn't want to live without them. And Wilbert and Poviwa sat around a big fire with the people and told the story of their great adventure. And Wilbert added, oh, and please, never make fun of the moon. And Poviwa said, oh, yes, when you see the moon, tell her how beautiful she is. I was thinking about this story, and I was driving, when Tom Petty's song came on. Yes, and the song was Keep Rolling. <laughs> we don't know what's coming, but keep on rolling. That's a message from the moon. The wheel of the year has made another turn. One season has passed into the next. When we celebrate these occasions, we remind ourselves that we humans do not stand apart from the world, but rather are a part of the earth, and our lives move in rhythm with the cycles of nature. Welcome to summer. So, the sun is our ultimate source of warmth and light. Each day, but especially now, it shines brightly and spreads around the world. Even as it gives its light and energy to each of us, 
it is never diminished by sharing its power. The sun passes over us to our experience in a seemingly ending cycle, never ending cycle. Today we share the light with each other, passing it around, spreading our own indistinguishable light. Oh, right. All right. Um, have you ever had the experience? See, do we have the image up there yet? There we go. If you've ever had the experience of having a tarot card reading, you might have been fortunate enough to have seen this image. This is the sun card. We refer to it as fortunate because that is exactly what it represents. Success, happiness, hope, self-confidence, and the attainment of knowledge. It can have other interpretations depending upon the context of the reading, but it generally tells us that when the sun is shining down on us, we can expect good things. Don't we all feel a little happier on a sunny, summer day. And then I invite Susan Smith to share a reading with us. This reading is from Missing Witches by Lisa Dickens and Amy Torok. Litha, Litha is that light of truth, personal truth, self-esteem, abundance, growth, possibility. We can glance briefly backward to acknowledge the steps we took months or even years ago that have led us to where we are today. As you watch your buds bloom, literally or metaphorically, take a moment to say, I did that, I made that. I got here. Litha is also a perfect day to give some of that gratitude to yourself. Unabashedly honor yourself for getting through every single hardship in your year or your life, for tackling every challenge that has led you to this moment. Put your face to the sun and exchange vows of strength, courage, and persistence with that sacred light in the sky. You did it. You have risen and you will rise again. And I wanted to invite you to do a little energy exercise with me if you feel comfortable. So you just rub your hands together and you start to feel that energy in between your hands. And you start to stretch it out and make a little ball with it. And into that ball, we're gonna put gratitude for ourselves for everything that we've been through, for all the hard work that we've put in. And we're just going to take a moment to fill that gratitude for ourselves, to fill that ball up. And it can be a sound or a color, whatever comes to you. And now we're going to hold on to that ball, and we're going to put it in our heart and give it back to ourselves. Thank you. By the full power of the sun, all is illuminated. We see things with absolute clarity. With our outward vision, we can look around us and see each other here in the sanctuary. Among the familiar faces of our community of worshipers, with our inward vision, 
we can look within ourselves, using the power of illumination to examine parts of our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We have the opportunity now to take an honest look at all the things in our lives that appear to us now in the fullness of light. Are we giving our honest effort to the things we labor in? Are we keeping on track with projects or goals? Are we staying true to the promises we make? Are we upholding our principles and our values, even when doing so is an inconvenience to us? Are we giving fully of ourselves to those we love? Are we being loving to ourselves, even when to do so is also sometimes difficult to do? Reflect on this now. This is the gift of Litha. This moment of examination, of reflection upon what matters in our lives. This time when we allow the full light of the sun to clear away all the shadowy spaces and the dusty dark corners of our minds, if just for a brief moment. But what about all that happiness and fun, and all the wonderful stuff we were just talking about. Those things are still there. They're still present. Perhaps just waiting. Rarely has anyone ever walked the road to success without pausing to review, to correct their course if needed. And we offer this chance to all of you now. Just a moment ago, with our inner vision, we took an honest look at ourselves and the things that are going on in our lives. Now, with clarity of vision, determine for yourself what it is that you may need to adjust, to correct or amend, to have your success and your joy. Or if you can honestly say, that you feel you are on the right path, take this time to rededicate yourself to it. When you know what it is you need to adjust, or when you're ready to recommit to your joy and happiness, take a piece of this paper, imbue it with your intention, and create a little bit of illumination. Please join us as you are willing or able. If you need some assistance or would like paper brought to you and then carried to the cauldron, just raise your hand.
And now, more drumming and chanting. I encourage everyone this time, we are going to try to keep a beat here, so listen first, and then this one's going to be fun. to guide us rise in hope in prayer we find ourselves here in hope in prayer we are right here in hope in prayer we find ourselves here in hope in prayer we are right here we rise rise Rise, rise, in hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here, in hope, in prayer, we are right here, in hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here, in hope, in prayer, we are right here, and we rise. Rise, rise, rise. The moment something achieves its peak, it must inevitably begin to decline. No sooner than the fruit is at its most ripe, it begins to wither and fall. So too will the sun now begin its gradual decrease. Its warmth will still be felt, but its light will lessen each day from now until the winter solstice. Take with you these tokens as a reminder of the brightness and clarity of, of this day. Look upon them when things seem uncertain. Remember the joy of the summer sun and let your path and let it light your path always. So mote it be. So mote it be. Our lithorite is nearly done. Let us now give gratitude to the divine in its many forms for allowing us the gift of this day. Dear ancestors, holy revealer, great father, blessed mother, by all of your names, we thank you for sharing our circle and filling our hearts with your presence. Will the quarter callers resume their positions? As we release the quarters, the congregation is invited to echo after each direction with the phrase, be with us always. Spirit of the North, be with us always. Be with us always. Spirit of the West, be with us always. Be with us always. Spirit of the South, be with us always. Be with us always. May the sun shine brightly on your path. So mote it be.
hold on to this flame, tend to it well. Mother in the bosom of your being, from its steady warmth, grow a garden. And share the fruit with everyone you encounter. Let's close out with, a, am I supposed to read it? Sorry. <laughs> Let's close out with a fun little tune that reminds us we are all one. Please rise in body or spirit as you are able and sing along to the green grass grows all around. Words are in your handout and on the slide. Just a few more directions. We're not going to sing the whole thing. It turns out it takes forever. So we're going to do the first two. You'll have all of the words on the yellow sheet. So when it comes to you in the week, you can sing it whenever you're inspired. And I will say the first half of the line, and then you echo the second half in the parentheses, right? Like a call and response thing. All right. And now I go? OK. There was a tree all in the wood, the prettiest tree that you ever did see. The tree in the hole, in the hole in the ground, and the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And on that tree, Litha worship. Our worship is over. May our service begin. Thank you. 